everyone. Over the last couple weeks, there have been a number of sales on City Skylines and a free giveaway in the Epic Game Store that has led me to think about uh, what it would be like to be a brand new City Skylines player without any mods or DLC. And uh, that, that's made me want to create this video to show you how to begin and grow to a city of uh, about 10,000 people uh, if you were starting from scratch. So today I'm going to build this city on the Two Rivers map which is included in the vanilla base game and I'm going to work on this uh, completely vanilla map and show you how I would begin. I'm going to explain everything as though I anticipate that you've never played the game uh, before so if you have this might not be the most thrilling tutorial for you but if you haven't this might be really helpful. So to start out with, whenever you're building a city in City Skylines, you end up with one way into the city off a highway. And uh, one of the struggles that people have is you don't have a highway connection to begin with. In fact, you don't have any collectors or arterials either. But truthfully, this isn't much of a problem. In fact, I think it's, it's kind of a good thing. Uh, so what I generally do is I will go ahead and make a short connection and then uh, find a way to, to, to meet that connection up. So I, I'll generally connect this out, you know, 10, 10 units in, create another connection, and then after you place those initial roads, you get a couple more road options available to you. You get gravel roads and you get one-way roads. Now, what you're gonna notice is that I'm gonna initially build mostly gravel roads, but coming into the city, I'm going to start with these two lane roads. So uh, you'll notice that these are in the wrong direction. If you're playing in the PC, uh, you can right mouse click these to change the directionality there. Uh, on the, uh, it's, it's, it's using this, this upgrade road tool uh, to, to change them from uh, two lane roads to the two lane one way road. Uh, so I have that now and I know that there's a couple things I need to think about. First, I'd like to think about the geography of the land. Um, so you don't really have many tools available to you when you're starting out, including the tool that lets you view the topography, uh, the terrain heights tool. So you're kind of left to your own visual inspection of the land. So I know that for the city to begin, it's gonna need water, that's available to me, sewage, power, roads, and zoning. So I only have $70,000 to start out with and I've already spent 2,000 of that just building this city entrance. So I do want to be thoughtful and careful about the way that I start the city because I think it really lays the foundation for everything that comes after it. But at the same time, I don't want to bankrupt myself um, you think it, creating this city at entrance. Uh, so that's one of the things that, you know, I think I, where I deviate from some other uh, city skylines players is I just, I don't get very elaborate on the city uh, entryway just because I, I, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, so having a two lane road uh, that, that's gonna act as main street is completely fine. And then I like to get close to the water. I think that this would be a natural place for a city to begin. Um, but you could really start this anywhere and uh, I'm going to use this as the main street and uh, from there that's basically as far as I will get with paved roads. Um, I want these to be paved, I want this road in particular to be paved um, so that the speeds are a little bit higher there. The speeds of a dirt road are obviously going to be lower. So from here I do want to start a real basic grid. And, you know, there are guides here. You can do whatever you want for the grid. Uh, I, I'm going to expand this a little bit further uh, on this particular road. This will be a collector in the future. And I know that when I upgrade this, it's going to be wider. So if you go 11 tiles out, you will be able to have maximum density in this area. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I, I think I want to do a 15 tile wide grid. And when you're doing that, you can, do, you can figure this out in one of two ways. Number one, you can look at the cost. Uh, and, and do some counting or for me I know that this guideline comes up when you get 15 tiles so that's how I build this out so 
So just a real basic grid. And you might wonder what I'm gonna place here. And we have a few things available to us, residential, commercial, industrial. And if you look at this meter down here, which is the RCI meter, residential, commercial, industrial, you'll see what the city needs. And right now the city needs uh, residential uh, zoning districts. That said, those districts aren't gonna grow unless they have uh, sewage uh, or uh, unless they have sewage and uh, fresh water. So I'd like to think about these together. And I think that you're going to like to think about them together as well. Um, you wanna make sure that when you're placing your, your storm water, or your, when you're placing your water, you aren't sucking up uh, sewage. So there's two things you can do to prevent that. You can make sure that the water pump is upstream from the drain pipe or you could place a water tower, but be really careful with this. When you look at uh, some of the externalities, first of all, the noise is the same for both. Uh, but if you, for both a water tower and a water pump. So you're, you're gonna get that negative externality no matter where, no matter which you go with. Um, but what you'll notice is the water tower costs a thousand dollars more and produces half the amount of water. So it's to your best interest in the beginning to just pump fresh water out of it out of a lake or a, uh, a river. It's just gonna be a little bit more cost effective. And for sewage, you, you only have one option to start out with and that is the drain pipe. So you're gonna to wanna to get that as far away uh, from your water as possible. Um, and you know, this is probably a little more extreme than it needs to be, but I figure better safe than sorry. Um, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these uh, are both connected to your community and both have power. I like to place my my water and power underneath roads. Is it necessary? No, but I think it adds a little bit of realism. So I do it. Um, just kind of a personal OCD thing, I guess. Um, and then the last thing you need to get your city started is power. You have two options here. You can go with a wind turbine or you can go with a coal power plant. Wind turbine produces no, uh, uh, no, no uh, pollution. It does produce a significant amount of noise pollution, uh, more than the coal plant, uh, interestingly, uh, but it produces significantly less power. That said, it's only $6,000 as opposed to the 19,000 you would need upfront with the coal plant. So I would be using half of my, my financial uh, coffers right now to build the coal power plant. Another thing to think about is the coal plow power plant in the beginning is gonna rely entirely on imported coal. So if you have a traffic problem and traffic gets backed up, you could run out of out of, out of coal and uh, your power plant would, as a result, not work. So I like to start out with uh, windmills quite frequently because I just think they're a little bit more effective in the early stages of the, of the game at, at protecting not only your finances, but also kind of just keeping the infrastructure uh, in the right place uh, in relation to your budget. So I'll probably place one or two of these to start out with. And uh, you, when you place these, you also need to think about getting the power to your zoning districts. So I'm going to make sure that my zoning districts are gonna have power. And I also need to make sure that my sewage over here has power. Now you might've noticed I skipped this area. The main reason for that is I'm going to use this as the first place that I zone. So I'm gonna zone there and then unpause this real quick. Okay, so this is what I was hoping for. Uh, because I um, zoned this entire area, it filled in with property and those properties uh, act as power lines. Uh, they can uh, share, share power from a building that's directly adjacent to them. So as a result, I don't have to place a power line um, in between these buildings and I save a little bit of maintenance cost there. It's not significant, but hey, you know, a little savings is a little savings. So why not go for it? So I'm just gonna continue zoning to try to meet the RCI needs. And eventually, like right now, you're gonna start seeing that we have commercial and industrial needs that are, that, are, that are coming up. So I like to place commercial along the main drag. Um, 
commercial definitely needs traffic to, to be successful. And uh, this is a place where, where you could accomplish that. Uh, it also makes it so that all of the residential properties can walk to uh, shopping and, and, and workplaces relatively simply. So I, I like to go and, and, and do that. Uh, also, we're seeing that there's some industrial demand as well. So I am gonna start to build out my grid again proceeding uh, 11 tiles up off the main street and 15 tiles over. Now I'm gonna turn my snap tools off and what those are is they're, they're tools that make it so that you snap to roads or snap to um, the grid and I find it easier to make curves or, or slight angles if I have them off. So I'll turn them off for things like laying water pipes from time to time. But they are incredibly helpful and I'm gonna show you where they're the most helpful soon. So we'll get power to this district and then start with some industrial zoning. Now one of the things I could have been really careful about here is, well, I actually, I, I got, oh, I didn't get lucky. So I could have tried to line these up perfectly I'm not overly concerned about that. A little bit of deviation in your grid, I think makes it interesting. So I don't stress over things like the grid being broken up a little bit or having multiple grids that join. Um, so in the beginning of the game, you only have a general industrial district, district available to you and you don't have the ability to view your resources, which is kind of a bummer. Um, it'd be nice to be able to look at the resources and you know see what is available. That's it, it's not the end of the world. Um, I am gonna speed things along a little bit. We do have some demands, so I'm gonna to continue to keep up with those demands. And the demands are mainly for industrial and for residential. And through a little bit of YouTube magic, I will get rid of the night because I think it's difficult to see what's happening uh, with the night cycle on. So let's continue to, to simulate and keep responding to those needs. And what you'll see now is we're actually starting to make money. So we've responded to needs and as a result, our city's doing fine. Uh, clicking on the electricity, I, I can bring up this panel and see that the consumption is below the production and we have plenty of water. Now while we're, while we're waiting for this to fill in a little bit, I do wanna mention when I placed this windmill i placed it in some of the darker area i placed it there because you get maximum production when you remove over you can see that it tells you your estimated production on a hill you're gonna get eight megawatts which is as much as you're gonna get with a windmill so uh, it's it's important to keep that in mind and it's also important to keep these spaced appropriately if you get them too close the production will drop because the windmills will actually uh, uh, it, it, they'll interfere with the wind uh, that the other windmill produces and as a result produce less power. So now we're at a point where all we need is residential. And I'm going to continue building with dirt roads. The main reason for that is it costs 20 cents a cell and 19 cents, uh, 20, uh, $20 a cell and 19 cents a week upkeep. And it's double that for our two lane road. And right now there's just no real need to to have a nicer looking, uh, higher cost road, people will be just fine with these uh, these dirt roads in a smaller town like this. They'll function appropriately as well. So there's no real, there's not really a good reason to, to change it at this point in time. So until our population builds up, we're kind of just waiting. Um, so one thing that we could do is start thinking about how we're going to integrate these grids into one another. So I might just build out a little bit more. Oh, until I reach the little hamlet. So a population of 420 people gives us the ability to build garbage, healthcare, and education, uh, change tax rates, and take out loans. This is really important to think about because uh, all of these things that are now new services available to us are now new services that are required by the citizens in the city. So we can't neglect placing these. We need to place them right away. And to facilitate that, the game will give you a little bit of money. So, and it also slows the 
uh, the speed of the game down to make it a little bit more possible to, to place these things. So the other thing is you'll notice that in our info views we're getting some new views to, that we can take a look at. So we can see that in our education view there are 58 citizens that could be educated. So we better get a school placed and this should be centrally located. So I'm going to put it right in the middle of all of our residential districts. We will also need trash collection. So I'm going to place this trash collection on a local road very near our collector. Uh, so I'm going to put that right here and this will serve all of the citizens of the city well. Next we have our health care. Knowing that this street's going to widen in the future, I'm going to place it just a little bit off Main Street on a local road that will in the future have good access to our collector. So one of the things I just noticed is I went 11 tiles over down here, but I didn't do that up here. That's going to be a happy accident. It'll be something that makes our city a little bit more unique. Maybe I'll fix it down the line. Maybe I won't. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I, 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 I think that one of the things people can get stuck on is being too perfect. And these are the sorts of things, these little mistakes, uh, I think they make a city interesting. And they simulate some of the odd design decisions you might see in reality. So roll with them. No need to, no need to get crazy about fixing things. Just, uh, just roll with it. So I just did something interesting here. So I used the curved road tool in combination with the road guidelines to create a road that perfectly met this future collector at a 90 degree angle. I would highly encourage you to do that. Whenever you're meeting a road at a 90 degree angle, it's a safer road and a better connection. Uh, so you might as well do that. I just used the curve, uh, the, the freeform tool here to do the exact same thing and, and have a nice join with this neighborhood. I'm going to do the same thing to get around this rock and preserve this natural feature. I'm going to have to turn off my snap tubes to make this a really clean connection though. So it got a little funky there, but we preserved the natural landscape that we, we have been given and I think this could be a unique space as a result. We don't have uh, any of the DLC, so we're unable to turn this into a formal park space. But there's no reason that we can't just make it an interesting place for our, city, uh, our citizens to walk by, a place that you know, we just enjoy looking at. So that is the sort of thing I will do. Work with the landscape when you can. And obviously in the early game it's easy just to grid out and uh, it, honestly it makes a lot of sense. Grids facilitate rapid expansion and that's why they're so popular uh, in a lot of newer cities. So we've got all of our needs, our new needs covered. So at this point, it's just responding to our RCI meter. And I know that there's no need for commercial, but I know that I'm gonna to wanna to put it here in the future. So I'm just gonna leave it there anyway. And just build out our residential area. Also going to lay water pipes. Now I like to place redundancy in place, and this is part of you know being a planner. Um, that redundancy means that you could work on water pipes in the future and not need to cut off water to an entire neighborhood. But in the game it's helpful too, particularly if you have natural disasters, uh, because it would give you the ability to have a natural disaster occur and not need to completely, uh, it not, not completely sever uh, water from a particular area. I noticed that the RCI meter slowed down for a while. And what that might mean is that you're missing um, a core city service. And, and for us right now, that is power. Our water's still good. We have lots of water production um, using the facilities that we have, but our power production is lower. Now we do have the ability to look at sound now, and you can tell that these power plants, they have a lot of uh, sound issues that come with them. So I am going to move that as a little bit further away from the city and try to spill some of that noise over in areas that don't matter as much to the city. Just want to make sure it didn't impact my other turbines, so we should be good. At this point, I'm going to turn the simulation speed up. We've got everything placed that we're going to place now and 
At this point, we just want to fulfill our demand. I'm going to build this industrial area out just a little bit. Turn my snap tubes back on. The other nice thing about a grid is it makes it easy to expand your infrastructure like water um, and reach Worthy Village. So now we're at a population of 850 and that opens up districts, some policies, police departments, fire departments, industrial in, industrial specializations, um, and uh, police and fire. So that's, that's great. Um, we also have the, the, the power and water policy, which can be used in conjunction with our tax rates uh, to, to kind of get around some power issues that we could, uh, could face in the future. So that said, it also gave us a boost in our, our city's coffers. Yeah, so we're, we're in a good spot there. We've also unlocked the four lane road. And I do think I want to upgrade this right off the bat because we're gonna end up demolishing a whole bunch of buildings uh, to get this road upgraded. And that just, it's the unfortunate reality of the game. I wish that you could start out either reserving right away or having a four lane road off the bat, but you can't. Now I wanna do this for a couple of reasons. First, when you look here, it creates a more logical connection. Uh, now you have two lanes meeting up with two lanes, even though, unfortunately, the inside lane is, is looping back around. There's no way to fix that without mods. And if you were playing on the console or uh, on, on, the, on the PC vanilla build on, from the Epic Store, that'd be difficult to rectify. Um, still, I like to keep it reasonable if I can. <laughs> and that's that's one of the ways that I, I find to do it. When you perform these upgrades, though, you're gonna notice that zoning breaks down a little bit. So I'm going through and I'm just fixing the zoning so that I get four tiles deep in each of these areas. And four tiles is kind of a, a magic, magic number uh, because that's the maximum density that you can reach. Uh, would be or the maximum building size for a zonable building, which is, that'd be four tiles. So might as well go out right away and, and make that your zoning size in these areas. And just kind of clean things up. The other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look, we're gonna use our, one of our new tools. We have a traffic route tool. So, so we'll come in here, you can click on a road and make it a priority road. Now, what this will allow you to do is if you look at your junctions tool, you can change the stoplights. Now, if you don't have priority set, it'll just turn everything off. But if you have priority set, it will add stop signs to all roads connecting into the priority road, which is really helpful because none of these signalized intersections would be warranted at this point. So, um, warranted means necessary, um, there's actually specific engineering terminology um, related to signal warrants and you have to meet a certain threshold of traffic to actually warrant the traffic signal. You don't get into that level of detail in city skylines, but I still like to think about that. If there aren't enough turning movements uh, or traffic from an intersection, there's no reason to have that signalized intersection. And for me, I like to keep them um, stop controlled or not controlled unless uh, it's a collector coming into a collector or an arterial coming into a collector. So we didn't place our new buildings and we have a, a, a small crime rate, but it's gonna, it's gonna continue to creep up if we don't take care of it. So I'm gonna place the police station just like I placed the, uh, the hospital near a collector, but facing the local road. The main reason for that is I want access to come off that local road, not off from the collector. Uh, particularly with this median there, it would make it the, those movements difficult. I'm gonna do the same thing with the firehouse once, uh, once I have enough money to buy it. So let's speed it up a little bit. I'm really close and I will spend every last dime available to me to build this building because it's so necessary. Um, it's important to keep in mind that fire departments are absolutely necessary if you want to build, level up your industrial areas. So truthfully, we probably need two here. 
Uh, the other thing we could have done, and this was kind of short-sighted on my behalf, would have been to put this a little bit closer to the industrial area. It would cost money to move this at this point. Uh, $2,400, I don't have that money. Uh, so that brings up something else. I'm noticing right now that we don't have enough power to serve the city. Our current consumption is 27 megawatts and our production is 24. So there are two ways that we could approach this. We could enact the power usage policy, which would add an upkeep of five cents a building. We don't have that many buildings, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Let's see what that does to our budget. So it resolves our power issue. We're now just at our need and our budget reduces by about a third. Not great, but let's take that off and go the other route, which would be to pump up our electricity production to 150%. Now, what that does functionally is it takes these wind turbines from producing eight megawatts of power to 10 each. So we're now at 30 megawatts of power meeting our needs, but it's costing us 50% more than it otherwise would. So this is not a good long-term solution. This is a way to get from uh, having no power uh, or not enough power to, to building your next power plant. So it's something you should really use sparingly, if at all possible. $6,000 a power plant, I'm gonna place this thing as soon as I can. Um, again, let's look at our sound, because that's gonna be the, our, our, our biggest limiting factor here. The commercial buildings can deal with it, the residential buildings cannot. Let's make sure we're connected. That was a really, <laughs> uh, to, that, that, that's close. Uh, that said, we now have a natural connection through. So I'm gonna eliminate these power lines just to save the money and take my budget back down to 100 so I'm not overproducing power. Uh, if money was more of an issue, I could reduce that uh, the budget associated with water treatment as well, I just, I don't see it as a big issue right now and I'd rather not think about that in the future. So interestingly, our power consumption is still above our production. And I know that we're gonna run into some issues with sewer backups and ultimately people getting sick and going to the hospital if we don't pump up our power. So I'm going to pump that up temporarily. We have enough money now to build another one of these wind turbines. I'm gonna build that again, place it near this. We don't run into any problems near our drain pipe ever again, and then repair our budget. Okay, and now because we've been meeting the needs of our citizens, uh, the residential demand has skyrocketed through the roof. So. We have some unique buildings available to us or just the icon unlocked. <laughs> so I guess that's a thing. Uh, you can't do anything with it, but it's there. So let's get back to expanding. Let's grid out a little bit more. And I messed this all up, so I'm gonna redo it. That could have been a happy little accident, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it just uh, because my OCD won't won't, won't allow me to, to keep that as crazy as it was. All right, and with that, we've reached our next level up. This allows some interesting things. We have canals, parks and recreation, landscaping, um, high schools, you know, and a variety of parks. And that's going to bring us to our next uh, city view that we can take a look at, and that's land value. So naturally, places closer to shore are going to have a higher land value. And land value has a direct correlation to happiness. And you can see that some of these properties that are further away from the shore are not as happy. So we might want to place some playgrounds or uh, well, botanical garden or other amenities to make sure that the citizens are pleased with the place that they live in. Let's place a couple of things. So we've placed that small park. Let's also place a playground. Take out a couple houses for it. <laughs> All right. You know, 
the neighbors aren't concerned that the houses uh, took the place of their neighbor. <laughs> we'll also place a large park. So I don't get too concerned about placing these. Um, there's an upfront cost, but I find that when you place these sorts of buildings, you end up raising the land values and as a result, your tax collections increase. So it's in your best interest to place these buildings. We'll do a dog park as well, right off Main Street. Uh, you'll see all of these buildings start to turn blue. Blue means that uh, the availability of, of this amenity is, is good. One more and I bet you that we'll max it out. So let's place a really nice Japanese garden overlooking the river. Let's see what that does. Here we go. Locally, this area is maxing out. Now the Japanese garden has a lower radius than some of the other buildings. And if you look at this little green line, uh, that's, that's really showing the, the impacted radius. Okay. So we have some other buildings that we haven't placed yet. So we have high schools. Um, I think that's about it right now. But we also have some other districts, uh, industrial districts that we haven't placed. And now that we have industrial demand, I'd like to take a look at those and give that some thought. So I'm gonna click on this natural resources view to see the resources available to us. Now, it looks like we have at least in our main area, we have forestry and fertile lands. Just over to the east, there are some ores available. That said, when you click into your districts menu, you'll see that you only have farming and forestry available to you. Ores are locked until you reach a population of 2,400. So let's think about those districts a little bit. So I'm going to click on this natural resources map and use that to create a grid for these areas. I'm gonna completely deviate from what I have been doing. This will provide some visual interest and allow me to kind of mimic the area for these districts a little bit closer. So I have that grid and I'm gonna start out right off, right off the bat by painting a district. So you go into the districts menu, go into district painting tools, and I like to follow the roads to make as clean a district as I can. Now, this is a tedious task. I wish that you could just highlight an area and create a district. Um, you know, you, you just kind of fill it in, but you, you can't. So then you go to your industrial specializations and you Click on the one you want and click on the district and, and there it is. Those are the buildings that will develop there. If you want to rename it, you can click on the, the name and, and give it something else. But I'm going to leave it. I'm not overly concerned about that right now. I do want this to fit in well with the community that I've already developed. So I will use dirt roads to join this up. Use the freeform tool meet one of the nodes and have a nice clean connection so we have a curved road meeting up. This will form a nice interesting grid in the future. You also need to zone this area, provide it with water and power, and then it will start to develop. So one of the considerations here is that now this district uh, is going to almost entirely rely on this local road back here or the series of local roads for uh, getting traffic in and out of the district. And that's not ideal. So I think that we're gonna wanna to improve that in the near future. I'm also getting a little bit tired of struggling with power. Uh, so I think it might be time to place a coal power plant. Now, similar to the industrial districts, I wanna place that near the interstate away from the residential area so that the first district served uh, is, is the one that has the power plant. So uh, the power plant is the first thing off the highway now. So we know that we'll never have issues with power, at least as long as this is the edge of the industrial district. Now let's extend this out a little bit. 
so it's no longer the edge i suppose <laughs> and uh the reason i, I want to do this is i want there to be a new collector in this area and this collector i think is going to be entirely different than our grid that we have established and i'm going to use part of fawn square our new farming district as the boundary of that collector so this will be another east-west co collector and this road right here that we created that turns that could be a north-south collector so to remind myself of this i'm just going to upgrade these roads this will also formalize this route as a destination and and the, and the main path that will be taken to get from any other part of the city to this area. I also want to be, just want to double check that signalized, not interested in that. Another interesting thing that I learned uh, not too long ago is you can change roadway. Uh, if, if you're naming the streets, you can click on a road on, on the adjust roads tool, modify its end location and name the road uh, based on wh where this ends. So something else to be aware of. So right now we're running into problems with employees. The main reason for that is we don't have enough residential buildings constructed. So let's continue to build out. So I initially was gonna keep this a little bit separated from the, the, the future collector, but I figure why? Let's just keep it with this, this, this buffer here, and in the future, maybe we'll just improve this road, have it kind of be a frontage road to this collector. Maybe we'll just upgrade that off the bat. I like that. So upgrade that right off the bat, then make our connections into this road. So I like to minimize my connections into a collector. Uh, this is, is, is clearly a mobility first collector and I can't even make connections in where it's this close so I might just leave it with this one connection and focus on making a secondary connection over here in this area okay and now that we have landscaping tools available if we wanted we could you know get fancy, plant some trees down this little area right here, whatever we wanted to do to make this a little bit more interesting. So lots of options here. Uh, I just chose a simple one. I don't think this is particularly attractive. It's, it's very symmetrical-ish and kind of boring, but it works, it's something. Uh, one thing that I like to do uh, sometimes, and I don't know if I have the availability to do it here, I do not. Um, you can if you have some some of the uh, uh, the Parkside DLC in particular, you can put a fence along the road and, and prevent the zoning from occurring. Unfortunately, in vanilla, you don't have that option available to you. Okay, so now we have some unique spaces, and I, I like these kinds of spaces because they are what makes the city unique. So I like to use the freeform tool to create uh, some some grids that, are, that that kind of blend into the to the environment that we've created. So you know create some interesting spaces. Fill things in with trees. Make it make it more interesting than it than it is right now. So let's pop some trees and make some, uh, place some residential districts. Again, that's still our, one of our top demands. Okay, before I even place this road, we will reach Boomtown. So now we have recycling uh, policy, recreational drug use, <laughs> uh, or industry specialization, the ability to make highways and on-ramps, um, plop a couple of different intersection types, tollways, uh, advanced wind turbines, buses, cemeteries, elder and child care. Now the elder, child care and death care are the main things that we're going to need to worry about. 
with Boomtown because these are now requirements for our city. So right off the bat, I'm gonna stop what I was doing and place a cemetery. I'm also gonna think about child and death care too because this will have a direct impact on the health services provided in the city. So again, this is another radius uh, focused building. So we will think about, we'll need to think about the location where we're placing it. Obviously like for childcare, if I place this here, it's serving industrial buildings. That's not nearly as, as, as useful as placing it here where I know it's going to serve my future residential expansion. So that's where I'm gonna put it. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue again to build out my roadway network. And you can kind of see having this area just a little bit different creates a unique development pattern, which I think, you know, is really, really cool. So let's take a look. Our power connections are being made through here. So I'm going to eliminate some of these power lines, save just a little bit on maintenance and zone some more commercial. Now, one of the things we haven't done yet is zone a, uh, a district that's primarily geared at, at forestry. So I think I'm going to extend this area out and do just that. Now, one of the interesting things about forestry is it's one of the few uh, districts that you can, uh, or one of the few resources you can control. So if you don't have enough density of, of trees to fully get the benefits of this district, Go ahead and go wild. Place some trees in that district and get the maximum benefit. Just be aware that when you place these trees, it's gonna take any fertile lands that you have in this area and completely sap them away. The trees are gonna take away that benefit. So uh, just something to be aware of. All right, I think we're treated out. So let's, uh, let's paint our district. Hillside Hills, and it's flat. <laughs> All right, well, Hillside Hills it is. Good enough for me. We will zone that, but we need to make sure that we set our industry specialization, or we'll end up with things like Goods Unlimited. No, you are not welcome here. Sorry. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna formalize this as the collector by Upgrading that road in the future, I'll probably want to upgrade it to a four lane road. Okay, so at this point, I just kind of built out the grid a little bit, tried to keep it interesting while still working it in as naturally as I could. Okay, so I, I made some interesting roadway connections here and things are for the most part connected up well. And the main reason I've been able to do this is I've used a free form tool. I think it's the easiest way to make an organic road network. Um, I know that a lot of people like to use the curved road tool and the straight line tool and they have their place, but so does the curved road tool. So I'm looking at this park and I'm realizing that I, I, I wanna make some connections to some of the paths in the park. And the neat thing about some of these assets is that you can. So that's something I just wanted you to be aware of. With some of these park assets, you can actually dive right in there and make connections if you want to. So don't feel like you can't. You can integrate them a little bit more into your cities by doing so. So 
Not a lot going here based on the location. This might actually lead me to want to center this park. Whoops. Let's turn our guidelines back on. Unfortunately, that carries through. Let's better center that and see if we can get some connections to both sides. There we go. This will make the pedestrian environment much more inviting in this area. You can walk through the park to get around rather than walk around it. So just something I like to do. There you go. Now this park basically takes up the entire block. And if you wanted to formalize that, you could plant some trees around there, make it appear that this entire block is the park. You probably want to randomize this a little bit, but we're just going to do something simple. Okay, people are going to love that. Uh, so much that they're going to want to move to the city in droves and we aren't going to zone anything appropriately. Uh, so as a result, they won't be able to live here. <laughs> so let's take care of that. Let's get some zones developed. And you'll notice that without high density buildings, it's kind of slow going. And let's speed this up as we add some of these districts. The nice thing about both forestry and farming districts is that they're pretty compatible with residential uses. Let's take a look. So right here we have our pollution, nothing really to speak of. Uh, our sound pollution, we've got some of that, but nothing that these residents can't handle. If it were too much, we could place a row of commercial or in the future offices even better to uh, buffer from these uses. Very good. So now we kind of just want to go through and make sure that we're meeting all of our city's needs. So we can tell that we are not meeting the elementary school need and we're certainly not meeting the high school need because we don't have one yet. Let's place a high school and then we'll need another elementary school so that all of the citizens are served. Death care is fine, health care is okay. We could probably use another clinic over on this new in this new part of town. Elder care is fine. So our, our, our most pressing issue is, is likely elementary schools. Place another one of those. I think jail availability is probably a close second to elementary schools. So we will get that ready as soon as we have the financial uh, wherewithal to do so. So at this point, we could wait or we could take out a loan. We could also adjust our, our power and water. I noticed that we are at the edge of our, our electricity availability. Same thing with water, so we're going to need to focus on that soon. Luckily, we're about to level up and hopefully get some some money that will help us move forward. So that's one of the things that you gotta balance when you're first starting out a new city is you got a lot of needs and not a lot of money. Everyone loves feeling safe. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So I do think that we are just going to increase our budgets to get by at this point in time. So we're okay now on power and water. You see the city's looking pretty good. Okay. I am happy. We do have some more industrial demand. So let's build some general industrial to satiate that demand. And as we place these things, you'll see that other needs arise almost immediately. Now we need commercial. And I think I'm gonna place a row of commercial on the edge of this industrial district and continue to build out our main drag, filling it out with different commercial uses. So this is going to be the end of our industrial district and that in the future I might transition to some more residential uses once uh, once we have the ability to do so. 
So I just kind of want to form a buffer there. The other thing is after work, people could go to the grocery store or uh, during work, they could walk to a place for lunch. So having these sorts of uses here would be totally natural. So we do have our power connected in this area without the need for that power line. So I am going to eliminate it. Give us a little bit more zonable land. Just because I'm paranoid, I'm going to place a power line there anyway, just in case. We have the same situation over here. Save us a little bit on maintenance. Not enough to really matter, but I guess every little bit counts. I think I'll plan a little uh, commercial district over here. Separate from some of the residential uses and provide people a place to walk to and shop at. So not a bad, not a bad use. And now we're kind of in this weird lull where we are just kind of waiting for the city to grow and reach our next milestone. And we're so close. In fact, I'll take this screen off and watch it get there in now. All right, there we go. So now we have our, our uh, oil specialization, level four unique buildings, city planning policies, including free public transportation and a heavy traffic ban. And uh, we have some more roads available to us, arterials and, and some of the four lane roads with trees, which would, would help uh, deafen some of the sound pollution that you might, might encounter in some areas. Uh, the, Roads that have uh, grass medians or grass, grass terraces uh, will limit parking, so that's something to keep in mind. They do look nicer, uh, but there's no parking available on those roads. Then we have some other buildings available to us. Tropical Garden, which would look weird on, on, a, on a temperate map like we have here. A large hospital, oil power plant, large fire station, and a police headquarters. So some really useful buildings are now available to us. Um, still, we don't have some of these things available in this map, so we're not gonna, gonna approach them. So we're just gonna continue to look at our RCI meter and continue to meet the needs of the city. Uh, still no new buildings outside of these, these larger buildings available. That said, we do have a need for a fire department, and I do think having a large fire station near the collector, but not on it, would be a benefit. So knowing that these buildings can sometimes, so the dirt roads are just slightly narrower than uh, than the paved roads. So I'm gonna upgrade this road before I put the fire department on it. Oh, please, oh, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> the fire department, and that will, uh, Make sure I don't have to move this or prevent the upgrading of the road in the future. I do think uh, from a budgetary standpoint, we're at a place where we could start upgrading these roads if we desired. I also don't think it's super necessary just yet. Let's look at our traffic. We're at 93%. You know, you could place transit now. I love transit. The city doesn't really need it. If I'm just being totally honest, there's a little bit of a bottleneck here. Um, that's kind of a hierarchy issue if we went through and fixed hierarchy and then set our roadway priority changed our junction junctions I bet you all this traffic goes away let's do it real quick let's add a signalized intersection where these collectors meet and just double check that nothing weird has happened as we've expanded the city. Yeah, lots of weird stuff has happened. Uh, one of the things, let's see. So our priority road does extend through. However, wow, that's weird. So I wonder if we have stop signs that have, yep. Whole bunch of stop signs have been placed because this was a priority road it loop back around so we'll, we, we've adjusted that turn that off and now all these stop signs are gone um, that said because right here 
is no longer a priority road for some reason, we have some issues with our junctions. So I'll just adjust that priority road, come back through, and make sure that we have stop signs. So good there. Then let's look at our zoning districts. Like I said earlier, when you upgrade roads, they can get messed up, and they certainly have. Okay, so we are in a better spot there. Now we have demand for basically everything again. So knowing that there is a commercial need and we want to provide some buffering between the, whoop, between the commercial uses and the residential, or the industrial uses and the residential uses, I'm going to place uh, some commercial uses along this collector. On the other side of those commercial uses, I will place some residential uses. We should also take a look at our park space. We've placed a lot of new residential uses and we don't have enough park space, but I suppose the more pressing need is power. So let's make a decision between a coal power plant and an oil plant. We don't have either of the resources available to us, so we're gonna be importing it. So the pollution with the coal power plant is greater than that of the oil power plant. The oil power plant costs more upfront and significantly more per week. That said, the power output is three times higher, so maybe it's worth it. It's more than it's more than three times the upkeep cost, but we'll diversify um, if for no other reason than to, to take a look at the buildings. There we go. Another power plant again in close proximity to the interstate. Now there's some stopping here. You might wonder why that's happening. When I changed the priority of this road, it added a stop sign right here at this junction. So let's get rid of that now. But before so, let's look at the traffic. We're still at 93%, even with this bit of craziness. Turn that off, everything's flowing well again. Traffic up to 94. Maybe we'll hit 95. Nope, back to 93. <laughs> That's fine. And our, our, our residential demand is again through the roof. So I wanna to start to mirror the neighborhoods again. So the road guidelines are the tool that makes this really possible. So I am going to use that tool to, to create neighborhoods that are identical on the other side of this collector to the ones I created south of the collector. And then I'll use my free form tool to line this up. The other neighborhoods that I've created. There's kind of an opportunity to make a unique road here. So I think I might just square this up and send this off and use that as a way to kind of make a unique gateway into the community. And then I'll, I'll round this off a little bit, this uh, roadway connection. Okay. So I did mention that I want to take a look at parks again, park space, make sure that we have enough because I know that we don't. And I think it might be fun to, to place a bigger, more unique park space. So we're going to place the botanical garden. We will put place the rear on the collector and have this building facing the local road. You could have this face the collector. It's probably a little more natural, but from a loading standpoint, it's better to have it off the local road. You can see the buildings around this. Absolutely love it. Leveling up. Going to a level three building. Homes in the area leveling up from two to three. We're in a good spot. So land value has a direct association with the leveling up of the buildings. You'll start to see places that have higher land value will have buildings that are leveling up more. Difficult to see right now, but it will become more apparent in the future. We are having problems with trash collection. And the reason why is our landfill is full. 
So landfills are something I like to avoid in this game, and as soon as I have the ability to no longer have a landfill, I get rid of it. That said, let's see the population we would need. So we have incinerators at our next population milestone, 7,000 people. Until then, we need to keep our landfills functioning. We are having significant garbage problems, and if this keeps up, people are gonna get sick. So let's just be really forward thinking about it, place two landfills, um, and really get this, get this cooking. And back to our parks. Before we place buildings in these neighborhoods, it's probably a good time to start thinking about parks because then you don't have to take down a bunch of houses to place the parks. Just a kind of a good practice. Like over here, we're going to take out a few houses just to get that park space in. The park space is necessary, but it'd be better to get that park space without demolishing a whole bunch of buildings. Okay, so residential demand is still our top need. What you'll notice is I haven't had to worry about the budget at all. Uh, once you get past that initial um, kind of sting, it's just keeping up with things. Just really keep track of, of what your city needs. Don't overbuild. Build neighborhoods. Don't build entire uh, towns. And you'll be fine. And you'll see that that's the way that the RCI meter best responds to you building small neighborhoods over building large elaborate grids your roads will look more natural as a result as well that's one of the things that is kind of a pet peeve of mine i have two pet peeves one is creating these elaborate entryways into the city that don't have any place in reality these big overpass monstrosities or uh, you know creating this freeway that you're planning into the city before there's a need for it. That, those, that's not how those develop, so don't do it if you can avoid it. Um, think about the best way for your city to actually naturally develop a mini grid. Okay, so you can place, we, we need water and sewage treatment. You can place these in close proximity and they won't impact each other. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. Terrible. This is exactly why you don't want to place your uh, your water pumping station um, before your your sewage your your, uh, your your water drain pipe. You wouldn't want to be sucking up this dirty poo water and giving it to your residents to drink. Okay, so we're good there. Things are looking, I think, really good in this town. I'm I'm, I'm liking this. A lot. We'll kind of just continue to follow our grid. Okay, so we've got this. It's working out. It's kind of something. So I'm just kind of. I'm kind of uh, at this point. Just kind of doing what feels interesting and good to me. And that's creating little pockets of commercial activity in neighborhoods. It's creating well-connected roadway networks that can easily have transit retrofitted in the future. It's, it's not sprawling, it's, it's preventing cul-de-sacs. It's making sure that people can walk to work, uh, walk to where they shop, where they get groceries. Those are good principles to, to think about when you're building your cities and good things to you know, if you're if you're picking a place to live, good things to think about there too. <laughs> okay, so commercial and industrial are our greatest needs again. So let's zone some more industrial, and we can build out this commercial as well. The nice thing is we're we're filling this in in areas that we already have infrastructure in place for, so it doesn't cost us anything to continue our expansion. And ideally, that's what you would do. So you can see I'm also creating a fairly predictable development pattern so that uh, when I do want to expand, it's, it's not difficult to do. It's 
It's a fairly simple process. The land uses are well laid out and predictable again. I'll make a couple connections into this neighborhood. I don't want to overdo it. Maybe even just one. And then from there, might have another frontage road. And maybe keep it a little more interesting in this area. Why not have a trail going through here? Won't really serve a significant purpose besides to keep it interesting. Keep it a, a, a different kind of neighborhood than the others that we've created. Okay, again with our junction, the stop sign there. This is again not a priority road again, so it is what it is, I suppose. So let's look. Child care's okay. Elder care is fine. Death care, we're okay. Health care. We could probably use some work here now. So maybe we start to think about our major hospital. And this road right here, going down here, is starting to look a heck of a lot like a collector. We don't have any north-south collectors. I initially thought that this could be it. But I think that right here might be a better option. Let's take a look at our traffic. Yeah, you're even seeing the traffic pattern support that. Oh, and I've placed a ton of buildings along this road. <laughs> so, mistake. So we will do a little bit of relocating. If you watch my main series, you'll know that I hate doing that. But, you know, from a, from a gameplay perspective, it's not that big of a deal. Um, your, uh, your Sims will forgive you. Your citizen will thank you in the future for the, the foresight that you, you have to, to create a nice, a nice city. And they'll appreciate that you're willing to, to take the, take a difficult stance. <laughs> so, okay, let's again set our roadway priority. So go into here, make this a priority road. Modify our junctions. You know, it's interesting here, we have signalized intersections basically everywhere except for where we'd want it. Okay. So that's going to focus our traffic into these few areas that we want. While still leaving a variety of pedestrian connections in other areas. And we could start at this point thinking about our backbone uh, Oh, actually, we don't have the ability in the vanilla game. I was going to put some bicycle connections, but we don't have the ab availability of the bicycle network in the vanilla base game. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> All right. So I do think it would be a good idea to continue to build out. Maybe we'll make a, a regional shopping destination over here. I just kind of wanted to create a road that um, provides some other form of access to this new shopping area. Not entirely necessary, but I think it's good to have redundancy. You don't want to focus traffic too heavily on any one area. And I find that that's something that, you know, can be really attractive to people. <laughs> Focusing all that traffic in one area, having one big arterial going down or one collector and, and using bike paths uh, or pedestrian connections everywhere else and you're really doing yourself a disservice when you do that having multiple connections is good planning and will mean that people take multiple routes especially in the game where they are taking a look at the shortest route that's that, that also happens to be the fastest so because I am who I am, I am going to move these water lines as I would otherwise have to dezone to keep the water pipes under the road. Not necessary again, but I like to keep it real. Industrial again is our main city need. So let's build it out. They might have wondered, why am I following the same grid pattern for this industrial area that I'm using for the rest of the city. It's wholly unnecessary. 
And you're right, it's, it's not at all needed. But I know that if I keep the same grid pattern, if I get used to placing certain buildings or certain parks, I can reuse this area in the future for other uses. And that's what happens in cities. Uh, buildings get reused, um, land uses change over time, and having a consistent block pattern means you have a predictable development pattern. And that's really important to all cities. So I like to mimic that here. So now we're just trying to get to that next milestone which is 7,000 Sims. So I am going to use my curved road tool to mimic the distance on this road. I know already that I want to have roads that wrap around here in the future without making too many connections. So I'll just make a nice clean curve there. And again, this is all the freeform tool with road guidelines. You, it's, it's the most powerful tool in the game in my mind, if you, if you learn how to use it. Takes a bit of time, but it'll so dramatically improve the look of your cities, it's worth, it's worth figuring it out. So I'm gonna deviate here, I'm not gonna have um, perfect well, no, I'm going to. I can't leave it like that. I'm just going to get lazy and not connect this up at perfect 90s. But it's just so much better. I can't, I can't leave it like that. Okay. That's much better. It's a safer intersection. And as a planner, that should, uh, should be the thing I'm always focused on, safety. So I've been kind of patiently building out this little residential area. I'm going a little bigger in this neighborhood than I have in previous neighborhoods. So I'm going to zone a large area at once. That said, I want to take a look. We have some high school needs and elementary school needs. We're going to have park needs. Let's take care of all this stuff right now. Especially because a lot of these uh, you know, there's a lot of synergy between these uses. So, so it's plazas that work well in residential areas. Other parks, we have this nice basketball court. Put that there. And load this up with residential uses. And right away get to Big Town. So this is really important because it gives us some new options. So we have a whole bunch of policies that open up to us. Taxation, uh, level five unique buildings, high density residential, commercial, and office, as well as fishing islands and a university and the incineration plants I talked about. So a lot of different ways you could take your city at this point. The most important place to take it in my mind is getting incineration plants. I'm gonna actually place two of those and start emptying this landfill so I can eliminate it. So you click on the landfill, you hit this middle button here, and it'll begin emptying this landfill into these incineration plants. So I think that's huge. We have a lot of money right now, so there's no reason not to just bite the bullet there. Okay, next up, we need to start thinking about some higher density buildings. So I think it might be neat to have a row of higher density buildings along the shore and I'm not really respecting the topography of the area, probably should be, um, but I'm not, so I'm just gonna continue to roll with that. Let's put some high density residential right along here and some higher density commercial as well. You might wonder why I didn't place any offices. There's one main reason for that, and that's we don't have universities. So without universities, you can't build uh, any office districts. You have to have educated employees for that. And one thing that's interesting about office districts is that offices are actually industrial in nature. I didn't realize that for the longest time. Someone pointed that out to me in the comments and it blew my mind. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of um, industrial 
zones right now, we won't need as many of those if we start if we place a university and start building offices. So that's precisely what we're going to do. Uh, this is a large building, so I'm going to place it in this residential district near near these collectors to provide a great deal of access. And uh, once we have that, we'll start to see some Sims going to school here. Now, if you don't have Sims going to your university, it's because your pipeline is broken somewhere. You have to have elementary students that are going to high school and high school students that go to the university. If you're missing high school students, you won't get anyone in your university. Libraries boost your education, but don't uh, they aren't totally necessary. Um, and they're large buildings, they're tough to place, so sometimes I just skip it. I'll put one here next to the university though. It's, it's a good location for it. And uh, I think it, it goes well with some of these other educational buildings that we've placed in this area. I am gonna speed the simulation up. We did lose a lot of population with that series of choices. So uh, let's get that population back. So I'm actually not going to place these residential uses directly adjacent to it. They are not going to like the noise that's produced by either these pumps or the turbine. So should probably be aware of that. So I'll use offices as a buffer in this particular location. I'm also going to start upzoning some of these areas like I was before. Um, kind of reusing these. I wish that we could just upzone the buildings and have them naturally evolve over time but that's not in the cards here not in this game so we're just gonna have to kind of sweep in and do that ourselves and as we do this you'll notice that the demand for particular buildings just decreases and that's because of the availability of uh, different zoning districts we've obviously by by upzoning this we're dramatically increasing the square footage of these different building types or square meters if uh, if you're met looking at metric and, and uh, if you do that the demand is going to be met so that's what we're that's what we're running into now not overly concerned about that Okay, so I think I've got most of what was here rezoned to a higher density zoning district. So what you're gonna see now as we go about this, besides not having enough water, <laughs> is uh, you're gonna see values going up significantly in these areas. So let's take a look in just a moment. So yeah, as we place these higher density buildings, the land value increases, which makes total sense. With higher land value, you're gonna see these buildings level up, and as they level up, our tax collections will go up as well. So if we wanted to see how individual areas are doing, we could create many districts within here. I like to do this sometimes based on when I developed neighborhoods. It's kind of a a realistic way of, 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 of approaching it. So you could create a couple of different neighborhoods like this. And you might wonder why I would do this. Well, it's nice that I can go in and look at the values of individual neighborhoods and see what, what neighborhoods are doing better. Obviously, uh, when, I, when I do this, I can see that more square is significantly more valuable than the surrounding areas. And I can dig into this more and try to figure out what makes this such a great neighborhood to live in. Might be the park availability, might be, uh, yeah, it looks like it's, it's kind of in the middle of all these parks. It's got uh, well, poor school availability, but it doesn't mind that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's a number of factors that go into that. Um, but it's just something that you can be aware of by, by, by doing this. But you can also apply policies to individual areas. So let's say that we wanted 
This area, because it had educational problems, inclu increased the, the education budget in this area for the one school that was here and really give that a boost. Uh, we could also ban pets to reduce garbage accumulation in this area, uh, lower taxes, uh, or ban heavy traffic if, uh, if that was a desire, which in this area you might want to. There's no commercial, so why do you need heavy traffic in there? You could also do a district over this industrial area. You might wonder why I would consider that, and I'll show you why momentarily. So let's say you wanted to um, change the job mix, increase production, and uh, you had a lot of job availability, you could put the industry in, industry 4.0 policy on there. This district right now will create many more products and it will serve, uh, and, and the job mix at these buildings will change. So now when I click on a building here, it needs a whole bunch of highly educated employees and no uneducated employees. Across the street, the exact opposite mix uh, and twice as many workers needed. So. Um, gives you some gives you some options there. These two landfills are both full. This one one percent full. Great. Once this empties, we can eliminate that. And it looks like both of these are working okay. Processing not in an excellent spot. This will improve once the landfills are gone though. So we'll just have to sit tight. Things get too bad, we'll have to build another, another another landfill. Although we're almost near the end of our tutorial, so we might not get there. I do want to take a look. What's our traffic look like? So we're at 89%. There are some things we could certainly do to improve this. Let's do one of those things right now. So I made sure that this is stop controlled. And I think one of the things that might be good in this industrial area, so we don't have a collector. So let's place a collector through here. Ah, small city. And that gives us cargo train terminal, hydroelectric power plant, train station, high tech housing, industrial space planning, which is one of those policies I like to enable citywide. Um, so some, some good stuff. So a citywide policy, I haven't explained that yet. You click on your policies menu and you don't have the specific district selected, whatever policies you apply would be applied to the entire city. So let's say I want the uh, industrial space planning, which doubles the amount of, good, uh, amount of goods produced per building while increasing the upkeep, I could just click on that and now every industrial district will have this policy applied to it from here on out. And all of our old districts will as well. Okay, let's finish this and get some zoning done. And you're starting to see that we are having significant employment issues in this district over here. And that is because we don't have enough um, uh, highly educated citizens yet. That'll improve over time. For the time being, it's gonna be a problem, and we are having garbage problems too. And this is kind of where you can get stuck. Um, you have these needs you need to meet. Sometimes you gotta overbuild stuff to make it happen. Landfills are gonna be that thing that I am overbuilding because we're way out of whack in our garbage processing because we've been emptying these facilities and this will improve now that some of this is gone and you can see it already and once these both are, are done emptying we're gonna be at a great spot set up for the future so okay we are um, you know a little under 200 150 away from meeting our population threshold and as this garbage situation improves. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna notice that the city just <laughs> ends up in a much better spot. I might actually just turn these off for the time being, stop the emptying, 
let the garbage situation uh, remedy itself and uh, hopefully have some more educated employees get pumped out of this university because we are struggling. Let's see, need more schools. You know, as the city is densifying, uh, you're gonna need more of these core uh, amenities available to you. You just see that things are just lighting up bright red. One of the things I didn't do over here was change the roadway priority. That would be a very important thing to take a look at here as well. Especially with the density of trash facilities over here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that uh, those trucks can leave quickly. All right. And I do see that we have passed our population threshold. I just don't feel good leaving this area without some of the stuff being rectified. So I'm gonna to continue to, to go to show you that it is possible to recover from some of these issues. And you see that there are problems with noise. Um, let's eliminate this. At this point, this will make people happy. Can also reduce some of our noise pollution by upgrading the roads, which would make perfect sense in a now high density area and then uh kind of look at our health care right now we have one clinic it's not surprising that people would get sick and be uh be kind of stuck so we'll build a proper hospital we have plenty of money for that and get our citizens health care back in line uh, as far as death care goes we're okay there we're doing fine we could certainly stand to build it, but you see our population's going up and now people want to live here again. We've uh, taken care of a number of the issues here. Garbage isn't a problem. We could turn one of these out. I think we just got a little bit too aggressive emptying this. Um, it, it, it's a balancing act. And as you move further along, these issues will stop being such big issues and you'll be able to just keep progressing forward. So. I think this is where we're going to end it. I will place this save file online just in case you want to putz around with it, see uh, where, uh, where, you know, how I've gotten to where I've gotten, and you know, maybe continue building on this yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one, uh, but I, I wanted to really make sure I covered uh, all of my bases, make sure that I get you to high density buildings, make sure that, uh, you know, this is a really comprehensive guide. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If this was helpful and you liked it, please hit the like button. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Hit the notification bell if you want to know when I release new videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.